kind of chose me. I was born, by, both my parents were in music uh, at the time that they met uh, when they immigrated to the U.S. They came from Cuba in 1960. They're both singers. So, you know, they were singing the Chicago Symphony Chorus and the Chicago Lyric Opera Chorus and doing all kinds of stuff. And um, so I was, you know, my mom's tummy hearing all kinds of stuff, I guess. And uh, while she was singing and doing all the things that she was doing. And so I grew into, I grew up in a household that was full of music. My parents ultimately didn't pursue it professionally. My dad ended up getting in languages and ended up teaching Spanish at colleges and universities for the rest of his career. My mother uh, continues, I mean, more on an avocational basis to make music, but it was just something that was a part of my life. My aunt, uh, my mom's sister, is a pianist. She still teaches at Temple University. She was my first piano teacher when I was six years old. So it was just one of those things that I didn't really think too much about it. You know, it was like, this is my life. And, and there were definitely questions along the way as I got older. I wondered, is it really my life type of thing? But, you know, no matter what I tried to do, it sort of kept choosing me. Well, I tell you, a lot of it, is, it was very fortunate. I came and did a doctorate here. I did a master's here in the mid-80s, and then I left. It was a percussion performance, and then I left. And I uh, worked for about 10 years before coming back to get my doctorate. And I did my doctorate here, um, very long story short, uh, because I really could only take a year's leave of absence from the job I had in South Florida, and this seemed to be the most, you know, I, it was a great school, number one, and two, it was convenient. I was able to combine my master's and spend a little less time working on the doctor because they made, a, they made an accommodation for that. And I happened to um, be a fi uh, fill-in conductor for Maestro Spurgeon, who was the director of orchestras here for 31 years and one of my mentors. The first, uh, within the first week that I was here, uh, he called me and said, I can't conduct the Enigma Variations of uh, Elgar on this coming concert at the end of the week because my mother passed away. Uh, I need you to do it for me. And so I just stepped in and did it, and uh, it turned out to be very, very successful, and it went really well, and from there, I mean, I continued to work here as an assistant conductor of his during my doctorate, and then when I finished the doctorate, um, I went to San Francisco State University, where I was the director of the orchestra program there, and one good day in December, I was barely there a semester, um, I got a call from then Dean Pearsall, said that they uh, had created a position of second orchestra conductor because they were starting a new orchestra, the University of Philharmonia. Would I be interested in it? Uh, of course, how do you say no to that? I was like, you know, so I got all the way out to San Francisco to come all the way back um, over here, and I started as the associate, if you will, director of orchestras. And uh, then when Philip Spurgeon retired in 2003, um, there was a search for his replacement, and I ended up becoming director of orchestras, which was one of the great honors of my life. Oh, wh where do I start? I mean, first of all, this is a great college of music. I mean, this is one of the important and recognized colleges of music in the United States, number one. Number two, um, I think we have a very fine balance of programs here. You know, we have a great music performance program, we have a great music education program, we have great programs in commercial music, therapy. I mean, I can go on, I don't mean to leave people out, but there are just so many. You know, and so there's a really great balance here, and I think the students that come here, uh, regardless of what their particular strengths and passions happen to be, the direction they decide to take, they're going to be really well prepared, not only for their career, but they're going to be really well prepared for life. I think there's a real investment on the part of the faculty here in, in students and the well-being of students. You know, success for us goes beyond, are you playing all the right notes or are you winning the audition? You know, but what kind of life are you going to live? What kind of contribution are you going to make? How are you going to be able to continue in what is a difficult career and successfully negotiate all of the challenges of that career? And I think that's a great environment, you know. And I also, I think the colleagues here are just extraordinary. I mean, we've got such, such an incredible faculty. And I know that I'm motivated every day by this incredible group of colleagues that I have who are so fantastic at what they do but also because we share that common bond of really wanting to be, to pick the student first in everything that we're doing, and I really believe in that. And so, you know, I, I don't know why I'd want to go anywhere else. Well, sure. I mean, I was, uh, for 17 years, I was the uh, music director of the Tallahassee Youth Orchestras. And, um, and uh, of course, I do a lot of Allstate stuff. 
all state orchestras, honor orchestras, and stuff like that. I'm a judge for the uh, European Festival of Music for Young People in Belgium. I do that every couple of years. Festival Disney. Um, the reason I do all of that, I mean, I believe in that, is because I need to meet the kids of the future, right? And I think music can have, and, and I'm not, I'm less interested in whether they become majors or not majors. I mean, half of the all states that I do, if I ask the kids in the group to raise their hands, how many of you are going to music, it usually ends up being less than half, you know, which I think is a good thing. Not because I don't think being a music major is not a wonderful thing, but, you know, jobs are not necessarily open all over the place. And I think if you're going to do something like music or visual art or theater, I mean, anything in the humanities, especially where, you know, there's not an assumption of a huge paycheck at the other end of the rainbow, um, you're doing it because you're passionate about it and because it is what you are and what defines you. But there's plenty of room for people who are doing other things. To be, we, we need audiences. We need audiences. We need people supporting arts in the schools. We need people who are going to make sure that their own kids take music lessons because we know that these things enhance people's lives. Intellectually, it enhances their, their, their brain development. It enhances so many, their social development. You know, I mean, being in an orchestra or a band or a choir is about a community of people working together for a common result, right? That, you know, you tell me if that's not a necessary aspect of social life especially these days. So I think I like being able to be kind of, you know, like so many of my colleagues are kind of a, a, an evangelist for that. You know, I mean, being able to really share with kids the power of music, the power of the arts in general and what it can do for them. And so um, all those years that I was with the youth orchestra, I mean, I would say 75% of them at least didn't go into music, but they went into other things and were successful. And, continue to make music advocationally and continue to support these things and really look back at that time in their lives as being something so very positive for them. And that just was really, that made, that made a world of difference for me, personally. Well, diversity means to me that there are opportunities for everybody. You know, I come from, uh, I come from a family of, you know, I'm Hispanic, you know, Cuban-American, and um, diversity to me, I mean, I've never really seen color differences. To me, you know, I've had all kinds of, I've never seen gender differences. I mean, we're either good at what we do or we're not good at what we do. And I think for me, what it means is, is that there should be opportunities. Opportunities should exist for everybody. Anybody, regardless of where they're coming from, regardless who their family is, regardless how much money they have, regardless of the color of their skin, it just doesn't matter. We should be blind to all of that. And they have the same expectations of everybody, which is work hard, okay? And you, t you too will have the opportunities that everybody else has. And that, that's what it means to me. And so just making, and I think we have that here. I mean, making all of our programs as open and as available to everybody as we possibly can. And those people that perhaps are somewhat, perhaps financially, comp you know, unable to, to realize some of these things, let's make that available. You know, that's not, a, that's not an entitlement or anything like that. That's just helping. That, I think, is part of what a democracy should be. You know, giving every kid the opportunity to pick up an instrument or at least experience hearing an orchestra or a band or a choir once in their lives. You know, they should not be restricted from the opportunities that are available to so many of us. And that's what I think diversity is. Well, I'll tell you, we had a situation some years back. I mean, we have some of that going on already as it is uh, back when I first came. Um, and I've been, this is my 20th year here, and we need to do something like this again. We collaborated with the film school, and we had a composer that had been commissioned by a private agency that was a commissioning organization, and he's a very well-known Hollywood composer. His name is Jeff Beale, and he wrote a work for the University Philharmonia, our undergraduate group, to accompany the silent film The General by Buster Keaton. This is a 1924 film. And um, <clears throat> that was a great collaboration, because I had never really gotten involved in silent film I had no idea so I was you know I was learning from them they were learning from us uh, we've had a long uh, association uh, with the school of dance you know and so I think you know anytime anybody has an idea about ways in which we can get together and work together whether it's the visual arts and music or whatever it doesn't matter I mean there are plenty of examples of it as it is we're always we're always excited to hear ideas you know the only limitations on anything are money and time at the end of the day. I went to undergraduate school at Baylor University. That's where I did my undergraduate degree and I have great memories of that place. And really it was just, you know, I was in the marching band. 
uh, for a couple, couple of years. I was a performance major, but I was in the marching band. I really enjoyed it. I have great memories of the camaraderie that took place there. I remember being on tour with our wind ensemble. Um, that was a great mem memory because just traveling with the wind ensemble, performing at different venues, uh, getting into a little bit of trouble while we're, you know, I mean, in a good way, uh, being college students, you know. Um, I tell students now, this is the best time of your life and you don't get it back. So enjoy every day that you're here. There's also a concert on November the 8th. Uh, the university, members of the University Symphony Orchestra, it's a smaller version, will be giving a free concert. Of course, all concerts for students are free here at FSU, so you should really come and take advantage of that because, you know, I'm gonna just brag for a moment and say that this is one of the finest University Symphony Orchestras in the country, bar none. So. Um, uh, so, you know, come out, and that's going to be a really fun concert. We're calling it Old Wine and New Bottles. So these are works that, you know, go back and look back a little bit towards older forms, but by newer composers. It's really kind of cool. Um, so I would encourage that. And it's in Opperman Music Hall, November the 8th, 7.30 p.m., which is a Friday.